Warzone 2. You know that game that's the predecessor of Warzone 1, the game that we all loved? The game that is supposed to revolutionize the battle royale genre and Call of Duty. Well, that game's been out for a little over a week now. It's been about eight days. And I've been playing this game nonstop every single day. And I kind of wanted to talk about what I like about the game and what I dislike about the game. So I decided to make this video today and talk about the good, bad, and ugly sides of Warzone 2. I didn't want to make this video prior to the first major update because I didn't want the things that I talk about in this video to be basically useless after the update. Now, after we got our first major update yesterday, I finally decided to make this video. So I want to break this video down into three separate parts, but I don't want to start the video with the negative and bad things about Warzone. So the first part of this video will be the good followed by the bad and then followed by the ugly for the last. And as a reminder, these are just the things that I've noticed while playing Warzone 2 and my personal opinions thrown in there as well. So if I miss anything that you guys feel like I should have mentioned, feel free to comment it below. And let's get right into the good, bad, and ugly of Warzone 2. Starting off with some of the good things that I've noticed that Warzone 2 has to offer. Now, some of you guys may be actually surprised when I say this coming from Rebirth Island, but I actually really enjoy Warzone 2. And there are quite a few good things that I think that they changed in Warzone 2 that made the game a lot better than Warzone 1. The first and probably biggest thing that they actually changed is the map design. I'm not sure how many of you guys actually like the Caldera map on Warzone 1, but the new map on Warzone 2 is infinitely better. I don't know what it is, but certain parts of the Warzone 2 map make me feel like I'm playing Verdansk. And there's even some parts of the Warzone 2 map, especially in the city where it's laid out exactly like Verdansk. I really like how a majority of the buildings on the map have multiple ways to get to the top or multiple ways to enter the building. So it reduces the chances of a full team watching the one entrance to the building like a lot of the buildings on Caldera and Verdansk had and it creates a ton of possibilities on flanking your enemies or pushing a team. I think this map is one of the best that they've made and I don't really know what I would change with it but I will say that the flow of the map is a bit weird but that'll be talked about more in the bad part of this video. Another thing that I believe was a great addition to Warzone 2 and I'm sure a lot of you guys agree on this one is proximity chat. In there, Are you aren't able you? to talk to me? Proximity chat? So can you see me or you no. just kind of know the general area? Oh, okay. Proximity chat's never really been in a Call of Duty game before, and there's a lot of other older battle royales that had it. And honestly, there's some days where I want to play Warzone 2 where I don't even really want to try to win or get a lot of kills, and I would rather spend a lot of time just trolling people or goofing around with random enemies that I find in the map. I will say though, proximity chat can get a little hectic in squads, but at least you can mute it. But I think the pros outweigh the cons when it comes to proximity chat, and I hope that they never remove that feature. Another thing about Warzone 2 that I wanted to add to the good portion of this video is the gunplay. And I'm well aware that gunplay has been a key aspect of Call of Duty ever since it originally came out, but there's there's something different about Warzone's 2 gunplay that wasn't in Warzone 1. The guns actually have recoil. I know some of you guys probably just heard me say that and are a little upset saying it might be too hard to control certain weapons at certain distances. But after a few years of Warzone 1 where every gun had the exact same recoil pattern and every gun didn't move at all, I feel like it's a breath of fresh air and another skill gap that they added into Warzone 2 with recoil patterns because long gone are the days where some random kid's gonna beat me with a growl from 500 meters away. Adding a little bit of more visual kick or recoil to the guns in this game is a W in my opinion because it forces the average player to learn the gun that they want to use and it gives us more of a challenge and also gives us more second thoughts when engaging the enemy that's a long distance away another good thing about warzone 2 that kind of coincides with the map is the ability to actually be able to swim i'm not really sure why they never added swimming into warzone 1 verdance had a ton of those little quarry or floodgate areas that they could have just added water to and i know swimming isn't absolutely necessary to make a good battle royale but why did they never add it in the first place you can swim under the water to cross open areas and since it's very hard to see your player through the water you can actually use that to your advantage and it allowed them to add an entire new vehicle type to warzone which was boats i'm just saying that i really love the outplay capabilities that you have with the water and i'm glad that they added it the last thing that i do want to add to the good portion of this video is the graphics of warzone 2 for how big the map is i am very impressed with how good the game actually looks i will say that they could tweak the sun brightness just a little bit because sometimes they'll look at it and get blind but nonetheless the game is absolutely gorgeous for how big the map actually is even though some may say it's just a minecraft texture pack added over to warzone 1 graphics i think the graphics are a w now that we're done talking about some of the good things that i think that they added to warzone 2 i want to talk Talk about some of the bad things that they changed about warzone 2 the first thing i want to talk about that i'm not really a big fan that they change is the movement now i'm not necessarily talking about slide canceling i couldn't tell you how many controllers that i actually went through while slide canceling on warzone 1 and i'm actually kind of happy that they removed that altogether i am mainly talking about not being able to sprint while plating up not being able to reload cancel and also the new two-step mantling process the biggest reason why i don't like not being able to sprint while plating up is the fact that if you run into a building and there is an enemy sitting in a corner they'll get a couple shots off on you which makes you have to run away to be able to plate up you're not able to sprint so if the enemy that took those shots does have full plates and since they broke your plates you have to play up you're unable to run away from the enemy while plating and they'll easily be able to catch up to you i'm not really entirely sure why they removed that but i really hope they bring it back or at least tweak it slightly i understand that canceling reload in real life doesn't really make sense and call of duty probably wanted to be more realistic on that aspect but reload canceling has been in every single call of duty since call of duty 4. it's been a strategy for over 
15 years in every single Call of Duty game, and it allowed you to shorten the reload time. Or if an enemy was actually getting near you and you needed to cancel the reload and fire your weapon quickly, you could easily do that, and it would still have the ammo that was in the magazine before you press reload. Now, currently in Warzone 2, if you do try to cancel the reload, it'll redo most of the animation, making it take more time, and it completely got rid of the reload cancel technique that you could do while engaging in enemies. Just like not being able to sprint while plating up, I think it was another attempt to make the game a little bit more slow paced or realistic, but I really hope they change that as well. I personally think that the new two step mantling process looks pretty cool, but it makes the game so much more slow when trying to enter into buildings. Not only does it make the game slower, there are certain parts of the map that if you try to do the two step mantle on your character will actually fall back to the first step. And I know that's a bug that they'll eventually fix, but I just feel like they should just get rid of it altogether, in my opinion, because instead of pressing A or X once to get over a ledge, you have to press it twice. And the animation is a lot slower than it was in previous Call of Duty games. Another change that I'm not really a fan of is the fact that you can only buy a certain amount of things from each buy station. So if you go to a buy station and it was already hit by an enemy team and they bought the one UAV in the buy station, you can't buy another UAV from that same buy station. I think the reason they did that is so people don't stack UAVs in their inventory because it would be incredibly easy to do that. But a good way to prevent that would just be simply increasing the price of the UAV. And I feel like that change alone slowed down the pacing of the game a ton for people that try to go for high kills. Now I was on the fence about putting this part in the good or bad category because there's some aspects that I like about it and there's some aspects that I don't like about it. And that is the new loot system i honestly feel like having a bag and being able to go through people's bag and pick what you want and hold more things than the old war zone is a w but there is a lot of bugs when it comes to the new looting system the biggest complaint that i have with the new looting system is for some reason sometimes items fall on the ground and other times items fall inside of the bag i'm not sure if this was intentional or if it was just a bug but it's very weird how sometimes you loot a bag and the guns in the bag and sometimes you loot a bag and it's out of the bag same with the ammo kill streaks etc some will say that the new looting method is incredibly slow and it makes it a lot easier for enemies to hit you while you're looting but one positive thing about that is it makes it so you have to think more before pushing an enemy bag to loot it because you kind of want to make sure that there's not an enemy that might be baiting the bag or you want to make sure that you're not going to get yourself in a situation where you're stuck looting the bag so honestly i want to know your guys' opinions on the new looting mechanics in the comments below because i'm on the fence about it i like some parts of it and i dislike other parts about it another thing that i decided to put in the bad category of this video is the lack of contracts on the ground i mainly play solo so i like to do a lot of contracts to be able to progress through the game and get as many kills as i can and sometimes i feel like there is literally no contracts on the ground at all in order to do that honestly this one's an easy fix i just feel like they should increase the spawn rate of certain contracts but in all honesty i feel as if the reduced contracts was another attempt to make the game a little bit slower the last thing that i want to put in the bad category of this video is the decreased time to kill in comparison to warzone 1. now i don't know about you guys but there are certain gunfights where i feel like i instantly die and i understand that headshot multipliers exist but this game's time to kill is significantly shorter than warzone 1's i honestly think that they made that change just to make it a little bit easier for lesser skilled players to get more kills because with the current time to kill it is a lot harder harder to outplay an enemy that gets the first shot on you. I think they should do what they did with Warzone 1 where they add 50 HP to the overall health. And in my opinion, I think that small change would make the game a lot better. Now I'm not gonna lie, but it was a little challenging to figure out what to put in the bad category compared to the ugly category. So I'm gonna dedicate the entire ugly category of this video to the multiple bugs this game has to offer. Now I really wish I had a clip showcasing every bug that I've noticed in Warzone 2, but I haven't really been clipping all the bugs that I've encountered. And honestly, this video is going to get really long if I did that. But a few days ago, I did make a tweet where I wrote down all of the bugs that I've noticed. So I'm just gonna read off that tweet and let me know in the comments below if i miss any bugs that you guys have seen and i made sure to check the patch notes to see if any of these bugs were patched which most of them were not so going from the top of the list to the bottom the two-step mantling is bug causing players to fall down and regrab ledge a large amount of objects on the map the player can freeze completely after calling in a bomb drone especially when prone guns killed from enemies will fall either on the ground or be in the bag when on the ground guns are hard to pick up the game stutters a ton unless there's very specific settings used at least on pc proximity chat will randomly stop working which i will say they did fix that with the recent patch stronghold ai causes doors to turn invisible after going through them stronghold objectives occasionally will not allow you to grab the loadout after completing the challenge and also stronghold bombs will sometimes be unable to fuse or it'll make you defuse them multiple times prior to grabbing loadout you can't swap weapons while looting bag you have to stow them push step audio does not exist i can't complain about this one enough quad lobbies fill half full 80 percent of the time which i will say they did fix that with the recent patch as well consistent dev errors and squads that one's still happening a ton winds don't track unless you let the game force quit you after credits that's still happening after the update rp sensors do not work and they still do not work what icons disappear on the map after one one player grabs it and i'm not sure if this one was intentional or not but that is still a thing after the patch and lastly most perks do not work i didn't want to be too negative during my first ever commentary video so i didn't want to spend too much time talking about the bad or ugly portions and overall most of the things that i did just list in the ugly portion of this video will eventually be fixed i'm sure i think warzone 2 has a chance to be one of the best battle rails ever but i feel like there are some things that they need to change and again i can't stress this enough i'm not talking about slide canceling bunny hopping etc i'm just talking about a few quality of life changes i hope you guys did enjoy my first ever commentary video let me know how i did in the comments and also let me know if you guys would like me to do more of these in the future on different topics and as always thank you guys for watching the video